This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. On December 12, 2013, the New York Post published a frightening article. It's said in here that we have long known that Yellowstone is merely the skin on top of a supervolcano, a giant pool of magma sitting just under the Earth's surface. Exactly how giant has been the subject of much speculation until now. A team from the University of Utah have found out that Yellowstone's magma chamber is 2.5 times larger than previously thought. It is an underground cavern measuring some 55 miles by 20 miles and containing between 125 and 185 billion cubic miles of molten rock. If it blows, it will wipe out America. Let me repeat this. If it blows, it will wipe out America and have enormous impacts on the rest of the world. From analysis of rock and sediment layers, scientists say another eruption is almost due. So what would happen if Yellowstone was to erupt? Something close to Armageddon. Soil samples reveal that the last time it happened, the whole of North America was smothered by ash. The lava flow was almost as great. The streams of molten rock were hundreds of miles long and miles thick. Such was the extent of the smoke and debris cloud generated by the eruption that the climate of the entire world was affected for several centuries. That's the past. Is it really true that these kind of catastrophes did happen? And more importantly, could they happen again? Could Yellowstone blow? What does the Bible say? We have a free booklet, The Theory of Evolution, a fairy tale for adults, question mark. And in this booklet, we are quoting interesting events. We, for instance, say here that many animals became extinct long before Noah's flood, not because of evolution or because of gradual adaptation and survival of the fittest, but simply because of catastrophes. And then we are quoting from a German magazine, PM Perspektive, Das Wunder der Evolution, or The Miracle of Evolution. And in this scientific magazine, we are saying that the following was stated. The mass extinction 250 million years ago is perhaps the biggest catastrophe that has ever visited our planet. 90 to 95 percent of all animals became extinct. Our clock keeps running, then suddenly the Earth becomes shaken by another catastrophe. 65 million years ago, a big meteor out of space approaches 10 kilometers in diameter. Near Mexico, it rams deep into the earth and creates a gigantic crater. Huge amounts of dust and ashes are thrown into the atmosphere. Firebrands and storms result and volcanoes erupt, blowing even more ashes into the air. The earth becomes dark. A natural catastrophe of unimaginable proportions has begun, affecting first all the plants. Without sunlight, they cannot survive. As a consequence, great famines break out, first amongst the plant-eating animals and ultimately amongst all living creatures on the planet. It is assumed that the dinosaurs lost their basis for living. About 65 million years ago, when a huge comet crashed into the Earth, a devastating catastrophe that was accompanied by a winter lasting for decades. It sounds very similar to the volcanic eruptions which are being talked about in this article I just read to you regarding Yellowstone. We also say in this booklet that the BBC presented a television program entitled The Doomsday Asteroids, reporting that in 1908 a meteor blasted into Siberia and set free an amount of energy exceeding the atomic bomb of Hiroshima hundreds of times. If the media had crashed into New York, half a million people would have perished. The program continued to explain that it can be seen from old myth 
as well as from the records of geology, that in the past big objects, objects hit the earth and produced a lot of damage. The program also stated that it is more or less accepted that through an asteroid, two-thirds of all living creatures were destroyed and that 90% of the earth was engulfed in flames and the smoke darkens the sky for months, if not years. It is very uncomfortable to realize, the BBC said, and scientist Clark Chapman was interviewed, that an asteroid could hit the Earth tomorrow. He stated that we know that they are out there, but that we have not found about 90% of them. That is 90, 90 percent of them we haven't found yet. The Encyclopedia Britannica described a volcanic eruption in 1883 on the island of Java. It says that until the night of August 26 to 27, 1883, the island had an area of about 18 square miles. At that time, the most terrible volcanic eruption of modern times destroyed most of the island, so that its present area is only 6 square miles. One of the explosions produced the loudest noise ever heard by man. The sound was heard at a distance of 3,000 miles. The shock waves produced by the eruption and the accompanying earthquake were felt around the world. It was compared and computed rather that the column of stones, dust and ashes projected from the volcano shot up into the air for a night and a height of 17 miles or more. Tidal waves produced by the eruption attained a height of 50 feet and killed more than 36,000 people. The dust caused a definite lowering of temperature for two or three years and heavy rains worldwide during the six weeks followed the eruption. Now this is the past. Does the Bible say anything about the future? Does the Bible say that a volcanic eruption, as is explained in this article by the New York Post, could happen? Well, sadly, it does in this free booklet. And you can have a copy of it about the evolution theory. We are quoting several numerous scriptures. In fact, one is Isaiah chapter 24. Verses 19 and 20, which says, The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it. Another passage we are quoting is Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 6. You will be punished by the Lord of hosts with thunder and earthquake and great noise, with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. Isaiah 30 and verse 30 says, The Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard and show the descent of his arm with the indignation of his anger and the flame of a devouring fire with scattering, tempest and hailstones. Now, we also know about the plagues which God is going to pour out on rebellious mankind, which the book of Revelation talks about. Here's one which is quoted in Revelation chapter 8 and verse 12, which describes one of those plagues as follows. A third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. Think of the symptoms, the consequences of volcanic eruptions, the smoke and the dust which will darken the sky. Yes, what the New York Post is talking about is a real possibility. Yellowstone may erupt, that supervolcano may erupt, and it may destroy the entirety of the United States of America. Our free booklet, The Theory of Evolution, is going into many ancient events, 
telling you how catastrophes hit the earth, but more importantly, perhaps, telling you that natural catastrophes will occur. Jesus Christ talks about it. The New Testament talks about it. The Old Testament talks about it in many passages which we are explaining in our free booklets. We also are producing a weekly update. And in this weekly update, you can get a copy of it via email, free of charge. We are talking about events which are taking place today. We are explaining them in the light of biblical prophecy. This is just one of many events, one of many occurrences. We know that we are very close to the return of Jesus Christ because Christ is giving us warning signs. And he says, when these signs are taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus Christ will return to bring about the kingdom of God, the rule of God over this earth. He will wipe away every pain, every suffering, all the tears we are shedding today because of the suffering we are enduring. All of this will be a thing of the past. Christ is telling us to pray the Father, your kingdom come. We can look at the signs of the time and we can see that the time is near. But we should focus on the good news. The good news that God will come through the person of Jesus Christ to make an end to all pain, to all suffering, to all war, to all natural catastrophes. And he will set up the kingdom of God, the rule of God here on this earth, the only hope which mankind really has. Thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.